when my friend died in 08, that, that got me. Like, because he died in 08 and then we all kind of, like, started going our own paths. Like, I stopped messing about, I started hanging around the end doing stupidness. And then one of my next friends, who was actually a good kid, played football, got killed in something that he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And then that was the icing on the cake. Like, even, like I don't even have to be in it to feel it do you know what I mean and that that got me man and that's when I, I decided it, it, it's enough enough's enough alright so first and foremost good afternoon Mr Comfy good afternoon how's it going bro I'm good bro I'm good yeah, we, were, we were just talking about um, interviews yeah and um, one thing I want to say about your music I don't know how you feel about it. Do you feel like your music's kind of like poetry? Because when I listen to your lyrics, it does feel poetic. When you're not doing the bragging, yeah. it feels like you're doing a bit of poetry in that. Yeah. How, how do you see it? Yeah, do you know what? Like, It's funny you said that when I'm not doing the bragging and stuff. Like, I, I enjoy just, when I'm making a project, I get into this zone where I just I just want to make real music. I, d I don't know if that's the way to describe it, but I go into a zone when I'm just going to talk about what I'm going through. or And I just like to, I, I don't know, it just flows. That's That's the easiest... I don't know if it's easy as is the word, but that's the music I enjoy making the most when I'm just in the studio and and just flowing like it's poetry. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it feels like a lot. I mean, a lot of your records, yeah. they really are like introspective, they're deep yeah. um, lyrically, but it's almost like it feels like there's two sides to you. Yeah. It's like, don't piss me off. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, wait, how do you balance it out? Do you know what? Um, like I said to you a minute ago, like, I, I, prefer making that. I, if I could sit down and I knew that that would sell, that's what the people want to hear, I would make the deep music all day. Do you know what I mean? But also there is obviously a little side to me where um, don't piss me off or just don't get me in that zone. Like I don't even like being in that zone. Do you know what I mean? But um, And obviously people like hearing that. People, The fans like hearing you talk smack or hear you talk about what you've got. Or, do you know what I mean? It it, it it does feel like comfy. Yeah, I like it. I, I know what it, I know what it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's like you know you're newly signed. Yeah, we can't have it like you're getting straight to the other side. So yeah, don't yeah. keep the same audience. Yeah, yeah. so there's a lot of change. Yeah. Um, but when you made that record, did you know that that's the song that you want to go like as you're like um, you know like the lead single or your, you know first one? Yeah. Um. No, not really. Um. Obviously, I was I was just in the process of recording and making stuff and I got in with um, Fugitive, the producer on it. He's sick, like we, we, we was actually working on some girl songs and some other stuff, some deep stuff and um, he played me the beat and I just heard the beat and I just went, no, nah, no, nah, I want this one, do you know what I mean? And we made it and we basically just, what, as finishing the project, Comfy, I just, I just felt like it needed a video. I just wanted to get out, do you know what I mean? And I said to the label, yeah, look, let's, let's just go with this one and they'll, they'll for it and you're right, I didn't want to just, I'm signed and I didn't want my next move to be just jumping straight into do the girl thing or yeah. do a single or do a pop record. Do you know what I mean? Like, I kind of wanted to keep it like, yo, I'm still going to do this. I can still rap. I still got bars and yeah. You know, when I listen to your whole stuff, yeah. um, what's it, what's it, is it Life of Sin? Is it Life, of, Life Sin? of Sin, yeah. And, is, and what's the other song? Too Real? Too Real, yeah. Bro, those songs, man. Thank you. Like, you need, I, I want to discuss those songs. Yeah. Tell me, take me back a bit. Take me back into what actually was going through your mind when you first created Life of Sin and the actual studio experience. Yeah, Life of Sin, um, I actually wrote the hook for that as well. There's a girl singing on it yeah. and um, I wrote the hook for it. I, I, I wrote the hook first and I was, I was just kind of in a deep place, man. Like, um, Obviously, Black and Red wasn't out yet, so um, I was going through the stage of, obviously, I've, I, I, come, I come up, I had the hype, um, that joint played dirty, I had that massive hype. And then I dropped the mixtape and then it got to the point where like, I just wanted to make music, do you know what I mean? And I was very frustrated. And then um, I was in with ADP, my producer, and um, he, he was making, he was working on the beat. And I actually done a track called Don't Take It Personal, um, a track about just my mum and some real deep life experiences, but I couldn't make the project okay. um, because obviously we used a Janet Arco sample. Right. So, um, but we were still in that zone and still in that mood. Um, so, I was like, yeah, we need another one that we can actually have of our own, do you know what I mean? And then he made the beat and then I just I just blacked out. I didn't write that one. I just went in and I just blacked out and I was just literally just, everything I was saying was just literally what was on my chest. 
And um, yeah, that's how that, that's how that one come about. And then I got in Kai, um, sick, sick singer. She's from Birmingham, and I just asked her to come down to come and sing it. I was like, I need you to sing this one. Like, um, I feel like you can, you can deliver this the best. And she's not even that big or anything, but I just I. F- do you know when you hear someone's sound, like, I remember she put a track on SBTV and I was like, shit, I need her for mm. something. And when I find it, and Life for Civil's the one, man, then she come and just killed it. So, yeah. Yeah, but with those type of records, you really are touching people. Yeah. You know, um, let's talk about Two Wheel. Yeah. Tell me a bit about that one. Um, that, that one for me was was a deep one. Um, I, was, I was going through a bit of madness on, with my estate. Um, one, of my, one of my little youngers got stabbed up and then he got killed. And um, a lot of a lot of the other youngers ran off and left him, and um, it annoyed me because I remember growing up and obviously you know when you go through this stage from the state you think you're bad and but in my generation in my group we all kind of rid for each other do you know what I mean and we all kind of we we wasn't bad boys do you know what I mean like no we wasn't bad boys but we had heart do you know what I mean we wouldn't leave each other and that really upset me. And um, obviously Nelly died, and then it made me just think like that. That's how I, what made me actually made me want to do the song, and it and it made me think uh, I need to say that I need to not not for just my ends or my people, but for everyone. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna act like that, if you're gonna act like you want to be street or whatever, go f- not not go fully with it. But this is the things that come with it. Do you know what I mean? And and then I said, well, maybe I'm too real because maybe I'm too real to be thinking like that. And then obviously a, a, a lot happened and um, another boy I grew up with got killed when I was in Australia. Right. And um, that, yeah, it was just it was just a lot, a lot of that going on at the time, do you know what I mean? And it just had me in a dark place. So that's where I, that's where I felt to let that out. And then um, I had a lot of people asking me about Krepner Kona and, and Krepner Kona has left you and da, 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 da. But I felt like I needed to let them know that it's, it's it's not like that. It's more like these are my brothers. Like beyond music, like do you know what I mean. We we talk every day. We see each other all the time. We don't even talk about music every day. It's like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I feel like I just had to get all of that out in 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 two real. It felt like it was kind of questioning your circle, your surroundings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It seemed like there's that transition where, like, there's a code, but then the actions hasn't backed it up. Yeah, yeah. and the repercussions of it. Um, how do you get over that? Because I know music's therapeutic, but you yeah. know, those those are shocking things that happen in life. And just because you know we're kind of from the estates and we're black, yeah. it's almost like we get on with it. But how do you actually process that type of kind of trauma? It's like I just, I just think it's a thing that you just got to learn from. Mm-hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? You just got you just got to learn from it. And and like I said, I'm I'm not a bad kid. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a bad boy. Do you get me? I've, I've you go through the stages, like I said, of you wanting to think, you think that's the cool thing to do. You think you're invincible. You think you're invincible. Like growing up in this bear with you and you're out on the block and you're out and no one don't really want to trouble you and then and something like that happens. Like, do you know what I mean? And it snaps you back into reality. And I've, I've lost one of my closest friends, lived to my next door neighbor, um, died when I was like 16. And that made me think like, I, I'm not going down that road. That's not what I want. Do you know what I mean? That kind of, broke up my ends. That made it like, cause some of, some of us still wanted to be on the roads. Some of us actually went and got a job and, and doing well now. Like I've obviously gone the music ro- road, but you're right. It, it made me think and look at everyone and see what everyone really is on with me. Do you know what I mean? Like some of your lyrics, like, I mean, I remember one of the Dependency. Yeah. I think I was like, yo, how did young men come with these bars? <laughs> no, seriously, it's like, yeah. It actually is, uh, and I was started. I was amazed, like you know, I think about working outside, get a gym. Yeah. Like, yeah. how do you come up with? It's obviously a gift. Yeah. But how do you how do you see your process of creating lyrics? Do you know what? Do you know what? With I try to make everything have a double meaning. Yeah. Like I try to make everything have a double meaning. Like some things, people don't even get it all now that I've said. Like even in comfy, I say. You and I know I'm the best. I ain't got a gee, no lecture. But I feel like no, I haven't seen anyone clock, but I say, you and I know I'm the best, as in uni. Mm-hmm. And I ain't got a gee, no lecture. Got it. Do you get what I mean? But for every, it's like every line, I think of how, how I can make this mean something else as well, but actually make sense. Because before when I first started punchline and trying to do wordplay, I would just say anything. Like, 
I'm on the I'm on a wave tsunami. Like I would say anything, mm. but then I thought, how can I actually make it to actually make sense? So I'm not actually just doing a punchline for the sake of it. Like I actually want it to flow. Where when you listen back and think, did he actually even mean that? Do you know what I mean? So let's talk right now. Like um, a lot, a lot of your lyrics, when I listen to it, you do talk about trying to you know, take care of your family. Yeah. You know, being that you're so young, isn't that a burden? Not a burden, but it's a lot for a young man. Yeah. So now I start thinking about, you know, yeah. almost like I'm now already going to be looking after my immediate my yeah. family. Um, how do you deal with that part of uh, being a young man dealing with those types of responsibilities? Do you know, do you know I've, had, I've had it for, for a while, like even before like the music thing. and um, Obviously, I'm, I'm one of like six like, kids, yeah, yeah. but um, I'm like, my mum my mom obviously growing up for, lives in a council house, Goes to work, grinds, and I've I've never I've never wanted that. And I remember having a conversation with her, and and, and when I first started doing the music thing, and about when I'm I started doing well, making money, and I said, yeah, I want I want to buy a house, and like she was a bit shocked at that. And then I remember having a conversation with her, at like, no, like, mum, like this is this is where we need to go, like, do you know what I mean, like, and she got it in the end, but it it showed me that. It could have just been a cycle, and I've got I've got sisters that's got kids. I've got a lot like I've got ten, eleven nephews. Really? Yeah, like so I don't want them. I, I say to them, I don't want my nephews to grow up like that. Do you know what I mean? And think that's the cycle. Like yeah, we've got to go in a council house. We'll get a hostel. I was in a hostel at sixteen. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was in a hostel at sixteen. Well, you out, you moved out. Yeah, I moved out. Um, I was I, I was going for a lot with my mum. Um, even before that, and when I was like 13, 14, my mum went to Jamaica. And I was actually in my house, my mum's house, by myself. Wow. And my mum was in Jamaica. Um, and she'll come back every six months or three months. I could have went with her. I'm good here. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, and I could have went with her. And then, um, I decided, obviously, not to. And then she'll come back every three to four months. Or every six months. And that made me actually be a man. Like, at the time, when she first went, I was happy. I had my friends over, my girls over. It was fun. Do you know what I mean? And then when it, when it kept on going on, and obviously, you realise you have to be a man. Um, but it's made me who I am today. At first, it used to like when I used to think about it, it used to frustrate me, and like, I used to hate her for it. But now, if if she didn't do that, I wouldn't be where I am or think why how I think or do you know what I mean? So now we have you from you obviously did the independent independent projects. Yeah. Um, moving over to a label situation. Yeah. What do you see as the pros? I won't say cons. What do you see as the pros now that you're signed? Obviously, as you know, independent is just your own money, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like, not just saying I'm using the label for the money, but it literally is your own money. It takes a while for that money yeah. to come back. And and if I'm if I'm honest with you, like I was, I've never actually had a job. So from I was like fifteen, you about, like, I've never had a CV. I've never had a CV, yeah. bro. I've never made a CV, and um, I say it as a, as a bragging right, but it's not something I should be proud of. But I've had to do what I've had to do to make money. But obviously, that's had to fund my music career but I made a I made a um I made a I made a decision when I think it was about the times I joined play day around go down south times and that that I made that I can't do this, I wanna do music. But there's times I've been doing it and been broke. <laughs> mm. Do you know what I mean? And to do it, to fund it. Like and um and I I I got to the point where I'm not gonna sign the deal for the sake of it. Because we had we had offers before, but I'm not gonna sign a deal for the sake of it. But when the right deal comes, I feel I feel like that's my route. Some people that's not their route. Stormzy right now killing it independent. He don't need to sign. But with me, I felt like with my journey and like like I said, a lot of people don't know. I, I, I have not lived at home with my parents since I was 16. Do you know what I mean? Literally since I was 16, I've not gone back to my mum's house. Do you get what I mean? But I've got a balance funding where I live, looking after myself, looking after whoever I'm looking after around me, and fun music. Do you know what I mean? And That's stress. It's, it's, it's stress. <laughs> but th- like, like, we go back to like life of sin and too real. That's why I'm in that space. Because I know I know what, what I want to do and where I want to go. And it's like, I feel like when people throw obstacles in my way, it's like, just, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then obviously when the label situation comes in, Sony's come in and, and, and seeing my vision and and they're with what I want to do. That's that's the pros in it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it, it helps to balance things out. Of course. You, know, you can. I think when you do the month to month or the week to week. Yeah. 
the days turn into weeks, the weeks turn into years, and that really becomes a blur because it's just like, how do I get to, to survive? Exactly. Um, but then now that you're in this space, now obviously it's a new challenge. Like, yeah. All your supporters, they actually now need to actually go out yeah. and do the thing that they need to do. Yeah. You know, how do you see social media? Because a lot of the time social media seems to be a thing that helps artists, but I think sometimes it can give an illusion of who is a fan and who is actually a customer. Yeah, yeah. Um, social media, I feel... I've, 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 I've learned a lot on the Twitters, so yeah. like there were things like... When you got Twitter on your phone, and you don't realise how much people are actually looking mm. or watching what you're, what you're doing or what you're saying, do you know what I mean? And Twitter's entertainment. For everyone, that's where his followers is entertainment. Do you know what I mean? And there's times I've gone out and tweeted something. Maybe I should have just kept to myself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I've learnt from that, and I wouldn't do that again. So I tried to just keep it off Twitter. But I love to interact with the people, man. Like I did, I did something the other day, and I see someone said I did it for for ratings, but I didn't actually do it for ratings. Well, what was that? I missed it. Um, basically, I had a show, um, announced my headline show, yeah. and there was a kid that um he tweeted, oh. I, I want to go to Young and Show, but I ain't got no money. But like, I'm on my Twitter. I run my Twitter, so I've seen this kid before supporting, buying stuff, and and going to shows, and even other artists. I see him going. This is how mad it is. This is how in it I'm, I am. I see him go to a bonkers show. Do you know what I mean? And and I looked at this kid and I thought he's not trying to try the thing. Do you get me? So I just said to him, you know what? Send me your bank details, man. I'll, I'll send you some money for you and your friends to come. Like that's the least I can do. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I want him to come down. And when he comes to my show, I'm gonna make sure him specifically that like, come and have a good time. And don't I don't because people's laughing like, oh, how can you not have eight pound to go to Young and Show? But yeah, some, like I said, I've been broke, bro. So I don't want him to feel embarrassed for that. Do you know what I mean? That's why I sent him the money. Damn me a detail. I sent you some money, man. Do you know what I mean? To come down and have a good night. And I want that to be a night this kid remembers, man. Because yeah. I didn't have that. I had I had idols and that growing up, and I didn't have that. That's I think the pros in social media. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Is there any situation that really made you? I know you talked about you know the unfortunate incidents that happened with yeah. the state, but was there a few personally who thought, nah, like enough's enough. Like this is this is this is getting too much now. I need out of this. Um, it, it was it was mainly it was just mainly like not something nothing that happened directly to me, but mainly like things like my friend that what happened with my friends and. Um, when my friend died in 08, that that got me, like, cause he died in 08, and then we all kind of like started going our own paths, like, I stopped messing about, I started hanging around on the end, doing stupidness, and then one of my next friends, who was actually a good kid, played football, got killed in something that he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and then that was the icing on the cake, like, even like I don't even have to be in it to feel it, do you know what I mean, and. That, that got me, man, and that's when I, I decided it, it, it's enough. Enough's enough. And and there's matter things. I, I go to my older state now, like all the time, and the kids see me. And I don't ever encourage it. If I see them out there on the stupidness, like I'm like, why are you doing that? Like go get a job, man. Like and and I, and I was explaining to a kid the other day, how much money do you leave the year with? How much money do you actually leave the year with? Like profit. And he was like, oh, I don't know. Duh, 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 duh. And I would I would say to them another guy that that's working. I say, you make the same amount of money. You might you might actually have cash at the time and it's all good, cool, but you make the same amount of money. And the police can't take that away from him. Sure. Do you know what I mean? And I tried to get that message across, but being young and naive, you don't think like that at the time. So I make sure I try and go around there and give them positive vibes.